Back again at Educator.com, we're going to be continuing with our little literature section of the Reading Comprehension course. We're going to learn about types of narration. Okay, here's our plan in order to understand this. I'm going to give you one quick scene written from four different perspectives, and then we'll go over five types of narration, and then we'll do some quick fun exercises to recognize what they are. So, here are our different examples and from different perspectives of Doc Flanagan versus the zombies. One, Doc Flanagan stepped forward and let the Marines handcuff him. I knew it was pointless to resist. I didn't want anyone hurt. I turned around. I felt the Marines cuff me. Fernando and I watched helplessly as they put the cuffs on Doc Flanagan. Kovacs grinned. Doc Flanagan hung his head in shame. Fernando struggled not to fight. The doctor was handcuffed and taken away. This is the exact same scene, but I'm describing it from one, two, three, four different perspectives. Now, I know what you're thinking. You said that there were five types of narration. I'll be explaining that in a bit, but let's continue. The first type of narration is what we call first-person major character. I knew it was pointless to resist. I didn't want anyone hurt. I felt the Marines cuff me. Well, if it's first-person major character, we have what's called first-person narration. So they're going to say, I saw this. I knew this was going on. Me, I. We're going to use that first-person pronoun all the time. And we're going to be seeing the book and feeling the book through the mind of the protagonist. What's great about this is that it really does draw readers in and it tells a very intimate and very personal story. There is one hitch though. First off, we got to know, do we trust that character? Are they giving, we're not just getting what happens, we're getting their interpretation of what happens. And maybe this first person narr narrator is not somebody we should trust. Maybe they're not telling the truth or maybe they're kind of confused as to what's actually going on. Or maybe they're completely cognizant, lucid, and they don't have any flaws at all. I mean, who knows? Here's another example of first-person narration. Fernando and I watched helplessly as they put handcuffs on Doc Flanagan. Well, this is called first-person minor character. And so we have this first-person narration, but it's from a supporting character. It's almost kind of like we're not watching a movie, but we're listening to somebody tell us what's going on in the movie. And it really does draw the readers in. It's very, very personal and very subjective and intimate. And there's somebody that's on the sidelines. A good way to think about this is imagine you're watching Star Wars Episode Four, and the only people who you ever see anything happen from is from the perspective of C-3PO. Again, very personal story. Just like with first person major character, we have to ask ourselves, do we trust this character? Are they giving us the best interpretation of the, these events? Are they hiding things from us or are they lying?